Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Xbox On. Now recently, in between shoots, as we have this lovely sofa, Benny and I have been playing a bunch of co-op games together. Yeah, and I, I've, been, I've been winning. Like, uh, <laughs> no, I'm really sure you haven't. Yes, I have. I'm competitive. <laughs> Deal with it. But it got us thinking about loads of other games that are really fun. Hey, <laughs> there are loads of other games to play on a sofa that are really fun. So here's our list. Never play games with Benny. Well, that's, that's just mean. Looking back at Modern Warfare 2, you probably think about multiplayer lobbies filled with players wanting to be lone wolves, trying to get themselves nukes, sitting in corners with two-man army, harriers, pavelos, all-out chaos on the battlefield, but there was also Spec Ops, which forced you to work together and play together in order to finish all the missions. This mode was one of the best surprises in Call of Duty history. Rather than weaken the immersion of the main campaign by adding a second player for split screen, Infinity Ward decided to build a series of self-contained co-op missions. These ranged from noisy gunfights in Rio as you hunted down gang members in crowded alleys, to intense siege challenges as you coated the area of claymores and waited for waves of attackers to arrive. Some of the best levels involved stealth, where two players had to help each other spot enemies and make quick dashes between cover. I'll never forget trying to sneak past guard dogs in the Russian forest, and my character's throat will never forget being torn out when it all went horribly, horribly wrong. Now one thing we probably all associate with Call of Duty is people just trying to do the best for themselves, not working together. And that's what I love about Spec Ops, is it forced your friend to cover your back and you to do the same for them. If your teammate is shot, you have a limited time to revive them, encouraging you to stick together. But it's not just about survival. If you want to survive higher difficulties and unlock all 69 completion stars, you have to learn to move as one and cover each other's backs. When the two of you are working as one tight unit, it feels like you're starring in your own version of the famous level, all gillied up. Okay, let's be honest, your facial hair will never be as amazing as Captain Price's, but it's close enough. These levels also saw Infinity Ward having real fun with mission design, even dipping back into the first Modern Warfare. One level is a great twist on Modern Warfare's death from above, one player gets to sit in the AC-130, raining down pain from above, while the other gets to watch the chaos unfold with their boots on the ground. We always wondered how that mission would have looked from the ground level. Now, Spec Ops haven't been seen since Modern Warfare 3, but it'd be awesome to have them back in Call of Duty to go alongside zombies, so we've got even more stuff to play in co-op. With Christmas on the horizon, we're preparing ourselves for the cabin fever of being stuck inside the house with all our crusty relatives. That cabin fever, however, is nothing compared to lovers in a dangerous space time. In this fantastically creative concept, two pilots join forces to steer a giant gumball of a spaceship. Alas, whoever designed the ship clearly had a larger crew in mind, as all of its vital functions are spread across multiple floors. If you want to steer or realign the shields or aim the weapons, you'll have to sprint to the control control unit in question. Just as a basic idea, it's so undignified. I mean, come on, did you ever see Captain Picard legging it around the Enterprise? Didn't think so. Where things get tense for you and your friend is delegating roles. Does one of you hold the wheel while the other tries to cover the ship with the shield, or do you both ignore steering and prepare yourself for the bloody siege in the middle of space? In the heat of the moment, it's easy for communication to break down and for crew morale to plummet. And when morale plummets, that's when you end up giving your co-pilot a dead arm. I know for a fact that Picard never gave Riker the elbow. Even though the game looks super cute, it hides a really hardcore heart. Enemies will eat through a health bar in no time, and the bosses are like something out of a platinum game. It seems silly to get cross at any game that has you collecting rabbits in space, but Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time has that effect on us. In these heated moments, the only thing that can cool us down is the delightful little dance move two pilots do when they pass each other. If your friendship is made up of strong enough stuff, then this is a co-op classic for sure. Just don't go blaming us when you end up kicking your best mate out of the airlock. Have you ever heard of this saying, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen? Well, this game is gonna turn your living room into a raging inferno. Overcooked is one of the biggest surprises of the year. You and up to three friends are chefs tasked with making food for a never-ending stream of customer orders. Like any good kitchen, it's all about creating an efficient production line. The best teams organize themselves so that someone is preparing ingredients, another is frying them up, and a third puts them together into a tasty masterpiece. But person number four, sorry, you're on dishwashing duty. I'm a little confused at why this swanky joint has so few plates that you have to clean up the ones that you've just used. 
Of course, teamwork only works in theory. All it takes is for one person to forget their job or overlook a tiny problem and the kitchen begins to resemble a war zone. There'll be food burning, raw ingredients being dropped on the floor and customer orders being ignored. After several games of this, it's easy to understand why Gordon Ramsay drops the number of F-bombs he does. Kitchens can even turn the mildest person into a raging psychopath. And what's worse is it's an environment filled with knives. And all this is before you step into the weirder kitchens. Just a few levels into the game and your crew find themselves on a pirate ship where the waves cause the entire layout of the kitchen to shift or you might be leaping between two halves of a kitchen on the backs of two speeding lorries. I've heard of meals on wheels, but this is ridiculous. In one level, you even have to fight with rats for control of the ingredients. I'm not sure heating that up is going to make it any better. It's been touched by rats. If you want to get a true measure of your friends, then invite them to play Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. The game builds on an earlier adventure, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light. In that game, you partnered up with a 2,000-year-old Mayan warrior who, despite being older than some of the tombs Lara had raided, was pretty nifty with a magical spear. The game worked so well because both he and Lara had powers distinct to them. If you wanted to get ahead, you were forced to look out for each other. Hmm, maybe Benny could learn a thing or two from this. In her later Xbox One adventure, Lara is joined by up to three fellow adventurers. What's really clever is the puzzle design will actually change based on how many people are playing, adjusting to make sure that everyone has a role to play. Whether it's offering your shield as a platform or plonking yourself down on a pressure switch, you all become cogs in an ancient puzzling machine. Of course, it doesn't take much to throw a spanner in the machine. Yes, the sting in the tail is that while you are working towards a common goal, you are also competing to see who can get there with the most treasure. It makes no sense. No archaeologist wants to share their amazing find, but when it leads you to blowing each other up or deliberately triggering a booby trap to earn more treasure-grabbing time, things have taken a bad turn. There's always a character in Tomb Raider who betrays Lara to get some easy fortune. Playing that character yourself is surprisingly good fun. If you've mastered being a team of chefs, a team of soldiers, it is time to step up to a real co-op challenge where the four of you have to control one body. That's exactly what's on the menu in Octodad, a game about an octopus trying to blend into human society. Yeah, it's weird. In the single player game, this means steering his massive flailing tentacles around socially awkward situations, trying not to upset nearby humans. In co-op mode, however, it's about you and your friends upsetting him as you each take control of a tentacle and attempt the same tasks. The entire aim of the game is to convince people you're normal. There's nothing normal about four people controlling an octopus in a suit. It's amazing how even the most basic everyday activity can become a dangerous mission in Octodad. Can you plant a wedding ring on your wife without accidentally flinging the diamond into the crowd? How about making breakfast for your kids without throwing scalding hot coffee over everyone? To be honest, this stuff is hard to get right when you're in full control of his body. Hey, at least in co-op, it's harder to pin down who's to blame for the accidents. And when you do finally manage to get your head around those co-op controls, you can make your life even more difficult with roulette mode. In this setting, limb control changes between players at random. In the blink of an eye, your arm could become a leg and that all important item you're reaching for is suddenly far from your grasp. If you manage to get anywhere with this mode, you can give yourself a pat on the back, only you can't because your hand is now your foot. I'm not 100% convinced this game mode is playable in its current form. You know, I think it's actually just a sick joke by the developers where you'll just end up tearing your hair out. My next choice may say single player on the box, but it's one of the best co-op experiences I've ever had. Stick with me here, but Telltale's The Walking Dead is the ideal game for a group of people on a couch. The whole game revolves around tough moral dilemmas, forcing you to make quick judgments that will see the story branch off in unexpected ways. Okay, most decisions boil down to, are you going to say vaguely unlikable yokel A or vaguely unlikable yokel B? But in the heat of the moment, this seems very exciting. Although there's only one person holding the controller, why shouldn't onlookers weigh in and try and push the story in the direction that they want? 
Playing any Telltale game with a group casts it in a whole new light. Your gang might decide to vindictively go after a character they don't like, normally Doug, asking you to make decisions that will result in them getting chomped on zombies. They might also warm to characters and come to regret giving them a rough time earlier. When you hand decision making over to other people, they can push you towards a playstyle that you shy away from in private because it seems too unreasonable. It's so much easier to side with a tough old coot like Larry when your friends give you a free pass. Playing these games together is such a good idea, in fact, that Telltale worked into their new Batman game. A new mode called Crowdplay allows people watching your game to vote on the decisions using their phone or tablet. We love the idea of secretly trying to make Batman make terrible decisions by casting a malicious vote. It's a scheme worthy of the Joker himself, though it's probably a good idea that they didn't include this feature in the original Walking Dead. It would have been a total Doug bloodbath. Sorry Doug, but the people have spoken. It's a system I would love to see in future Telltale games, if only so I can continue making horrible decisions in private. You can't talk about co-op on Xbox One without talking about Gears of War. For me, couch co-op has been the beating heart of the Gears of War series, something I've always played with my brother. Come on, the whole Gears story is all about brotherhood and fighting alongside with people you trust most. So what better way to enjoy it than side by side on a sofa? You know that if there wasn't a war on, Marcus and Dom would have been all over that couch co-op. All right, I'm going to be honest, the comfy sofa means that you have a better time than the characters you're playing on screen, but still, it's the way it's meant to be played. More importantly, the game only gets better when you play with a friend. Think how much easier it is to flank the swarm when you've got a buddy acting as bait and drawing their fire, or how much safer you are to move forward when someone is laying down covering fire. Not to be rude about Dell and Kate, but they're nowhere near as sharp as a human brain. With two players on the screen, you can explore the different roles that weapons can play on the battlefield. A sniper can take up a long range position and protect their friend as they rush forward in with a Nasha shotgun. Or one of you can nurse a power weapon while the other thins out the smaller enemies and opens up a shot on a tougher foe. Of course, not all the weapons play nice. Balancing buzzkill blades have ended more friendships than they've saved. And when you're finally done with the campaign, you've got a second killer co-op mode, Horde. Okay, so it shifts the focus from the close bond of two men co-op to a four-man squad, but the sense of working together as a well-oiled machine is still really strong. The introduction of new class types really helps develop the team spirit as engineers busily keep the rest of the team well equipped, and the scout dashes into the enemy territory to grab energy for everyone to spend on defences. It may lack the scripted drama of JD, Del, and Kate doing their co-op thing, but in the heat of battle, there are few co-op experiences as good as this. So there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to let us know what your favorites are in the comments below. And also, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more content. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button and check out another one of our list shows. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.